And David is uh, running all over the place, and he's pursued, and he runs, and he's pursued, and he runs. And uh, we pick it up, the chase, in chapter 24, verse 1. And I'm just going to read it for us. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Which is where we are. And Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men in front of the wild goat rocks. And he came to the sheepfold, by the way, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave, and the men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will give your enemy into your hands, and you shall do to him as it shall seem good to you. Then David arose and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's robe. And afterward, David's heart struck him, because he had cut off a corner of Saul's robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to put out my hand against them, seeing he is the Lord's anointed. So David persuaded his men with these words and did not permit them to attack Saul. And Saul rose up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterward, David also arose and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My Lord, the king! And when Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the earth and paid homage. And David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say, Behold, David seeks your harm? Behold, this day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you today into my hand in the cave. And some told me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not put out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your robe in my hand. For by the fact that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you, you may know and see that there is no wrong but treason in my hands. And I'm not sinned against you, though you hunt my life taken. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me against you. For my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancient says, out of the wicked comes wickedness. But my hand shall not be against you. After whom has the king of Israel come out? After whom do you pursue? After a dead dog, after a flea. May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. And see to it and plead my cause and delivery, deliver me from your hand. As soon as David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I repaid you evil. And you have declared this day how you have dealt well with me, and that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For if a man finds his enemy, he will, will he let him go away safe? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now behold, I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my offspring after me, and that you will not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swore to Saul, and Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. So this is a story that takes place right here, right here at the springs of En Gedi. Uh, and what happens... Is for a small bit of commentary, right? Saul goes into the cave. The, the Hebrew there actually says he covered his he covered his feet. What he did was he relieved himself. He was using the bathroom in the cave, not realizing that David and his men are hidden much farther into the cave. And while he's there taking care of business, right? He just sneaks out, cuts a corner off the road, off, and later shows him, see, look, I could have killed you, and I did kill you. And it's this side of David seeking peace, wanting mm -hmm. peace with Saul. But he wasn't trying to forcibly take the kingdom from him. Mm -hmm. And Saul being really held guilty because of his, his panic, because of his insecurities of feeling threatened by a man who didn't want his place. Uh, and in showing peace to, in showing peace to Saul, really Saul realizes you're mm -hmm. going to be the next king. That you're more righteous than I. You're more deserving than I am. Just remember my family. And David had a close relationship with 
Jonathan. Who was supposed to be the next king, right? I mean, it would have passed on to Jonathan. Here, the two of them are, are the best of friends. Right. And even Jonathan, in another passage, says he knows that David's going to be king. Jonathan's already embraced this. And the, I won't tell you the rest of the story. I'll challenge you to go read it tonight. Uh, but David story. keeps that promise. David keeps that promise not to Jonathan, who dies in battle, but he keeps, keeps a member of, <coughs> of Saul's household alive at a seat at his table yeah. uh, from that day forward.